in this uh, lecture and video I will be going over dot product and its application and how we are going to use in the um, examples so we use dot product in two general application okay so let's see I have two real-life examples here two structures um, looks like two um, two steel structures maybe um, steel beams connected with each other both of them have some kind of rope attached to them or either pulling or holding them in place anyways the first one given is that u of r which i'm assuming is for rope in other words direction of the rope and we have u of b which again i assume it's for the beam direction of the beam it doesn't have to be u when we see u it usually means unit vector but it doesn't have to be unit vector it totally could be vector a v1 and vector 2 the important thing is we know the direction desired or found angle between these two okay or theta here we can use dot product which I'm going to explain second case that we use dot product for again given is force vector f in this case or doesn't matter just magnitude f and that direction plus the direction of it desired is find f along beam component of f along beam okay along the beam so here's a very good example if someone is pulling on that rope right someone is pulling with a force of I don't know 200 pounds you would like as a designer of this beam you want to know how much of that 200 is going in the direction of the beam so how how strong do you need to design this weld here or this bolt here so that's how you uh, you that's why you want that and we're going to use dot product to find it or you can find let's call it, um, that f2 find f2 how much perpendicular to that direction so parallel or perpendicular to a line direction whatever um, we can find so these are the two general applications of dot product and what we can do with dot product but let's look uh, see what actual dot product is okay I have vector a I have vector B they have an angle theta dot product of these two is a dot B and we read it as a dot B a is a vector B is a vector vector dot another vector results in a scalar results in a number this is a mathematical definition and the way we define it the magnitude of it magnitude only is magnitude a magnitude of b and a cosine angle between them which is just the magnitude because it's just the scalar this is magnitude of a magnitude of b 
and the cosine of angle between them. Okay. So let's find what is a dot product if I have a vector a, which is ax, ay, az, i, j, k. And if I have vector b, which is b, x, b, y, b, z. How can we find dot product between these? Before doing that, I would like to find what is the dot product of i dot i. Those are vectors, right? They're unit vectors, but they're still vectors. Or what is i dot j? So let's see. I, J, K, do you agree? In the direction of X, Y, and Z using right hand rule. So let's see. Let's go based on our main equation because that's all that we know so far. A dot B is magnitude of A, magnitude of B, cosine angle between them. Magnitude of I, what is it? Well, it's a unit vector, so it's 1. Magnitude of I, 1. Cosine angle between I and I is 0. Cosine 0 is 1, so the result is 1. So I dot I is 1. Now let's see. I dot J. Magnitude of I is 1. Magnitude of J is 1. Cosine angle between I and J, which is how much? 90 degrees. Cosine of 90 is 0, so this will result in 0. Same way, I, J, and K is 1. J dot I or J dot K or K dot I or i dot k, all of them are zero. Okay, so now I'm going to use this to find dot product of a dot b. So find a dot b. a x i a y j a z k dot bxi, byj, bzk. So I got to do this, this, this. So let's see. ax, remember these are just magnitudes. ax and B, bx are magnitudes. The only vectors are i and i, j and k. So ax, bx, i dot i then plus a y b uh, oh sorry a x b y now we're talking about i dot j and lastly a x b z i dot k okay Let's kind of look back really quick here. I dot I is one. Anything else is going to be zero. So this is one scalar. This is zero. This is zero. Now let's do a y. This and then this and then that. I'm going to skip it. I'm not going to write the whole thing. But if you look, we have an the first term is a j j i which is 0 the second term the only term that matters is a y b y j dot j which is 1 and lastly a z a z b x 
by bz. And if you look, k multiple by i, or sorry, not multiple, don't ever say that, dot, k dot i is 0, k dot j is 0, k dot k. So the only term left is az, bz, k dot k, which is 1, plus 0, plus 0, plus 0, plus 0. So therefore, a dot b equals ax bx plus ay by plus az bz. Makes sense because vector dot vector equals a scalar. I don't see any i, j, k or any vectors anywhere. These are just magnitudes, magnitudes, and magnitudes. So result of this is just a number, a scalar, a magnitude. Okay, so this is how you do dot product if you have components of two vectors. I, I will go over um, a lot of examples when it comes um, to using dot product. Okay, so let's go back to those two applications. One, find angle theta. So you have a force, which is six I, minus 6i, six 9j, and 3k, and you have a direction, AO. Find the angle theta between F, force F, and vector OA. One of them is a force, one of them is just a position vector. It's just a vector. Both of them can be a vector. Both of them can be a force. So to do this, we gotta go back a little bit. So let's see, F dot OA. If I go back to definition of dot product, let's see. If I can go back here, there we go. A dot B is A, B, cosine theta. F dot O, A is magnitude of F, magnitude of O, A, cosine theta. Magnitude of F, magnitude of O, A. The goal is to find theta so all i have to do is rearrange the equation so cosine theta equals f dot oa divide by magnitude of f multiple by magnitude of oa let's see if it does it makes sense f dot oa yes it makes sense it's a scalar and magnitude multiplied by magnitude is also a scalar. So we have a scalar divided by a scalar, which is a number scalar. So that makes sense. So to find the angle theta, we have to dot product those two vectors, forces, whichever we have, and divide by magnitude of both of them, okay? So I want to quickly go back here to the application that we had. Look, given was two directions, two vectors, vector one, vector two. In the case that we just saw, it gave us vector F, it gives us direction OA and says, hey, can you find the angle between them? And by using dot product, we were able to find the angle theta. The second application that we have, find parallel and perpendicular to a line or direction. Let's quick back look here again. Right here, the second case. F was given. Um, and a direction such as u was given 
and it was asking, can you find a component? Can you find FB or F2 parallel or perpendicular to that direction? Here's, I have another um, example. F is given, F is given, and it wants you to find, find F that goes to AB. In other words, parallel to direction AB or perpendicular to AB. So that's how we're going to use it. So if I have a force, or sorry, a vector A, let me put arrows here. Vector A, I'm going to redraw it here quick. Line AA, I have vector A. The component, component parallel to A or projection on AA or along component along AA. These are all the languages that different problem statements use, but they all mean the same thing. Is going to be a dot unit vector of AA. You might ask why. So let's see. Dot product of U. I'm going to write it here quick again. A dot B equals magnitude A, magnitude B, cosine angle between them. So let's see. A dot UAA, which is unit vector of the line. equals magnitude A, magnitude unit vector, which is one, cosine theta. In other words, it is A cosine theta. So now you tell me, what is A cosine theta? Isn't it just the component or projection or the shadow of that vector along line AA? Let's just make it a so that's why if you just dot product these two together you're going to get the projection for the parallel comp uh, sorry perpendicular component all you have to do is think about parallelogram okay and addition of vectors I can write a sub a as a vector plus parallel component, sorry, perpendicular component equals vector a. Remember, this is just addition of two vectors and resultant vectors. The first one is easy to find based on part A in a vector form. Vector A is given, right? Look, here F was given, or vector F was given, because here we have the magnitude, we have the direction, we can easily transfer it into a vector. So therefore, the perpendicular component would just be subtraction of those two. Together. So again, by applying unit vector, we can find a component projection along a line or parallel to a line. In next le next lecture, I will be using um, in ap uh, a lot of examples on applications of how to apply this and how to find. Um, either angle between two vectors or use the parallel and perpendicular components. Thank you.